Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. The holidays and family gatherings always bring out a lot of different emotions in people, for better or worse, yeah. mostly worse. <laughs> Usually, right? So this morning we're talking about how to stay mentally tough. So we have Eric Rittmeyer here, a mental toughness and emotional intelligence expert. And this is such a complex topic that I think everyone can relate to, whether it's a coworker, yeah. a family member, a friend, and COVID, no doubt, making things even worse. So let's just talk about what it means to be mentally tough. Let's start there. Great place, Ashley. Starting off with the color of your shirt. Good color selection. Love it. Here's the thing about mental toughness, right? It's about emotional control. We get no training on this. We go through a school system that teaches us to memorize and regurgitate. Then we get put in these situations where people say and do things we don't like, and we haven't been taught how to voice our disapproval with people other than anger and aggression. So it all starts with the emotional control part. Not easy to do, but there are tips we can all use. Well, uh, let's talk about that, Eric, because I, I feel like interactions between people who disagree have changed a lot yeah. over the past couple of years. I had a lot of friends who I didn't agree with three years ago, uh, and I feel like it's a lot more difficult now than it used to be. It sure is. Believe it or not, hundreds of thousands of years ago, we used to be able to disagree with people and not hate their guts, right? It's not that way anymore. Here's the issue. We're, we're emotional creatures. We're hardwired to feel first and think later. So again, when we get put in these situations, what we do is we react. When somebody says something we don't like, we react to it, which is knee jerk. We don't have much control over that as opposed to responding, which is when we process information logically, and then we can go back to them with a more with a more level-headed response it's not going to upset everybody but it all starts with recognizing that we can have opposing points of view without hating each other yeah it's so sad you know if you think about it eric the fact that we can't even have civil discussions i mean even he says things, we can we can well we can okay you're right we can <laughs> but we haven't been uh, so what are i mean what if you know you're going to meet you know over new year's you've got how do you prepare coming, yourself yes yeah, so let's let's dig deeper into into how to prepare you know and I, i'm thinking about a specific person in my life and, and we disagree but i'm right I also, here ashley this is weird i also mentally know that you know sh she may essentially trigger me and yeah. to just, you know, stay kind of quiet. It's the cousin that of the world, right? Just rub him on his belly, Clark. He lets you rub him on his belly. We have to prepare for this, right? These are two of the biggest words in my language. I have no idea how to spell them, but I can tell you what they mean. Systematic desensitization. What we do is we prepare for these situations. Just like if we're on a diet, if we know we're going somewhere, there's going to be lots of food, we eat in advance. We drink lots of water so we don't go there and eat an 18-inch pizza. We have to do the same thing mentally. Prepare for who's going to be there. Recognize what they're going to say. Try to run these things through our head so when they say it when they pull that trigger when they push that button we've already been there mentally we're able to compartmentalize and address it logically as opposed to emotionally so prepare yourself just yeah. be ready for the situation uh, and you spent years as a marine do you, do you feel like that helped guide you into what you do today teaching folks about mental toughness I, I, I do, Kirk, you know, but the issue really boils down to just everybody recognizing that we're all hardwired the same exact way. We're just different variations of the same core psychological blueprints. If we can all recognize that innately at our core, we all want peace, kindness, happiness, empathy. If we all start there, we can start to realize that ultimately we have more in common than we have that separate us. Let's allow ourselves internally to decide who we like and dislike. Don't let other people tell us that. Oh, man, I love that. Such a great message. And how about the old, you know, maybe a cliche, but agree to disagree. It's so simple. Yeah, right. And we seem to have forgotten that, especially over the last uh, couple of years. All right. Great advice for us this morning, Eric. Thank you for joining He's us. He's got the book, The Emotional Marine. Thank you for your service, by the way. We yes. appreciate that. And thank you for your time this morning. You guys are the best. Thank you for having me. I I'm appreciate just gonna it. I'm going to take Eric with me next time I go to a <laughs> there you party. Go. He can help me work through those. Uh, Eric, what should I do now? This guy's starting to yell at me. I think we should have Eric on like before every major holiday, <laughs> before any birthdays. Yes. Yes. Maybe Eric's on weekly just to, you know, mentally prepare us every time. Hey, we had some incredible numbers uh, over the last 24 hours.